Hey guys, it is Elite Drago here today. Finally back again. I'm sorry for shaking the camera. <laughs> I'm doing this in my bedroom, so it is a little cramped. So sorry if you guys see the uh, camera shake. But so I am here today doing a combo video because somebody asked me a while ago to do a little bit of a combo video so they can really understand how the deck works. A little step by step. So, this is literally uh, three structure decks of, you know, the uh, Seeker Beast structure decks. Literally three of them. And I did add in some other cards um, that are that obviously didn't come with the deck. So, I'm just going to show you, like, a typical hand. Like, say if you have to go first. So, usually a lot of people run a lot of decks that want to go second. This one can be either or. If you go second, you just plus them a little bit more. But today, I'm just going to show you strictly a combo if you're going first. So, I'm sorry. Let me just try to fix this a little bit. There we go. Sorry. Give me a second, guys. So, so yeah, this is just a, a combo that, you know, if you go first. So, this is a really good hand. Well, it's not a really good hand. It's like, it's kind of like, you know, a hand you kind of hope you would you would get. Where it's like where you could plus the most if you go first. See, so yeah, ideally, you actually do want to try to get three of each. Not three of each, I'm sorry. One of each of your searchers to your hand initially. So, initially, you want to summon this guy first. So you summon him, you summon out your uh, Dark Beckoning Beast to the field first. Summon him out. And, um, it allows you to search for a card. So usually, I would usually search for this. My, uh, Spirit, uh, opening of the Spirit Gates. So you, usually what this does is you... When you activate it, you get a search off its initial activation. Other than that, you do not get any other searches. So you search that to your hand. And then, you, would, of course, you would activate this. And then you would just, like, you know, search for, you know, something that you need. So, um, let's see here. You would search for... Let's say if you search for. So you already have something you search for. Look at that. Okay, so usually at this point, since you already have the three searchers in your hand, you would just search for. I'm sorry about that. Search for your fill spell, which is, you know, your, full, your fallen paradise. So you get your Fallen Paradise, you activate your Fallen Paradise. It protects your level 10 or higher monsters from being targeted or destroyed by card effects. Um, if you have, if you're facing effects that literally just send yourself to the graveyard, then you will have to figure out a uh, different uh, approach on that. But so you have that, you have your field spell, and obviously every, uh, well not obviously, but um, as long as you have Haman, Yuri, or Raviel, every turn you get to draw two cards during your main phase. So, you do this, uh, it, search, it searches this, and then you get additional normal summon off of that. And then this, search, it, it searches into that. Um, that's if you have your other two in your hand already. If not, then you would use this to search into him. And then, after you would do your summon, you would, uh, and of course, after you would summon him out, you would tribute him to get the Haman out of your hand, and then from there, you would just, um, use, the, use this effect, discard, 
to bring himself back because you already have a um, you already have a uh, level zero uh, monster in the graveyard. Not level zero attacks. <laughs> zero zero attack monster in your grave. I don't know why I say level zero, but um, and then with this, you obviously you can tribute it, um, summon one of the other ones from your deck. So usually at this point, I would just go for the second Haman, to be honest, because uh, when you summon a uh, Sacred Beast monster off of this, uh, they can't attack. So. Because it's being summoned directly from the deck, and also when he's in, when this is in their graveyard, you can actually um, banish, and I believe it's to add it to your hand. Let me just double check that real quick. Uh, so you can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Yuria, Haman, Raviel from your deck to your hand. So you can add it literally right from your uh, right from your deck to your hand. So usually at that point, um, you would get this, you would get your Raviel to your hand, and then this is still in your graveyard, so you would just have this also for your setup, so you would set this, um, of course during your opponent's turn, activate it, and since you have one, one of the three already in your field, you get the first effect, which each time your opponent normal summons or special summons. Uh, you gain that monster's attack as life points. It's the, if you have two on the field with different names, no Yuri, Haman, Raviel. Uh, the second effect, I believe, is that your opponent cannot activate um, their monster effects. And yeah, negate the act, uh, activated effects of monsters your opponent controls. And then the third one is any monster your opponent control is sent to the graveyard and is banished instead. And then, um, and then also once per turn, uh, if you control a level 10, a 10 monster, you can add one continuous track card from your grave to your hand. So if you, for example, like if you have like, I don't know why people still use this, but maybe they do. If you have called to haunt it and you, and you got rid of call to haunt it for something, like you, you got, you know, rid of like a call haunt it to other Two, two other continuous traps. And you still have this on the field. You could just reoccur the cold one into your hand, or uh, or anything that's going to help you. You know, basically reoccur your lower level monsters or lower attack monsters like this. So there are there are some like um, like uh, I think it's limit reverse, limit reverse. You can um, bring like limit reverse or the zero attack monster, bring it back to the field. Um, and then you can just like destroy if you want to. That's usually for like, U-Bell builds. Um, I will get into that another time. Because uh, I do have a friend who runs U-Bell. So I might do a deck profile. If you guys want me to do a deck profile uh, for uh, U-Bells. Um, I don't know if there are a lot of people that run U-Bells. But I know that's his favorite deck. So I will have a talk with him. And see if he wants to do that. And also just let me in the comments below if you want to see U-Bell build. Because... Um, this also could be combined with U bells, because U bells, I believe, are level ten or higher. So, like, if you run in U bells and you have this, and, and then like you know, or if you have uh, this other field spell that I use, which is the uh, Mount of the Bounce Creator, that does level ten or higher, so it protects them. So that's another good combo card to use. But so yeah, so you get you get the. Uh, you get the Raviel to your hand. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Get the Raviel to your hand, and um, and then from there, you know, you can activate this during your opponent's turn. Of course, now they, uh, when they normal summon special summon, you usually gain life points, and they can't attack you because you locked them out, and they can't target or destroy yourself by card effect because of the fill spell. So, initially, sorry, excuse me. Initially, they would have to get rid of this first. Unless they can use effects to send yourself to the graveyard, um, then you would have to find a alternative protection uh, resource to use against that. Um, like, like, it's, like I don't know if I said this before, but this isn't really a tournament like build 
for tour like for tournaments. I mean, you could use it, but I don't know if you, you would get very far because this is kind of like a rogue deck. So, um, it, uh, like if you're just there for fun and you just want to stall your opponent, this is a good stall build because you can just stall and then draw two cards every turn, and then from there, you draw two cards every single turn. As you guys seen in my uh, my other uh, deck profile for the actual deck deck itself, I do run the five pieces of Exodia. So if you if you decide to stall and just you know, stall it out and you know draw draw three cards basically a turn because you draw for your turn and then you draw two off of this, so you have a one in three chance of getting one of these pieces of Exodia, you know, literally to your hand. And you no, know, from there, you it, depending on what you draw, you can just uh, you know get your Raviel out. So like if I draw, I don't know, like if I draw, say if I draw this, right? But this is actually a really good, really good thing to do, right? So I have this in my graveyard. Say if I draw this my next turn, I don't use this yet. I'm not worried about that right now. So I have this. I got this in my hand off of this because this is out of play so I got this and then now I'm like okay well what can I do alright so now with this guy here with uh, Shimmering Scraper if he's in your graveyard you could tribute a Fiend type monster oops sorry Fiend type monster and literally just recur him back to your hand like <laughs> it's like alright well I don't need this guy anymore so I'm just gonna like tribute him and get him back to my hand just to free up my free get some free space going but initially what you could do is you can use this as save as your next turn your opponent's not really be able to attack you or nothing because it's like the beginning of the duel and you just bang I locked you out beginning of the duel you can discard that bring this back to your field tribute right back to the graveyard bring out your raviel and now with this you can use this effect in the graveyard tribute uh, I'm sorry, I'm about to summon him. <laughs> uh, get him back to your hand, not summon. Don't, don't get twisted. <laughs> you get it to your hand. So, and then from there, if you wanted to tribute one of these two for his effect, um, for his effect, then uh, you could do that. I I don't suggest doing that because it's a part of your lock, so your opponent can't attack you. Um. Unless, like, you save your face, you know, again, save your facing a deck like Dinos. This may not be a good match for Dinos. Depending on how many, how many, how many of the Sacred Beasts you have on your field. So, like, say, right now I have two, right? Okay, so with this, this prevents uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyrannos effect from being, being able to activate. So... Because he's on the field and is considered as an activated effect. So it's like, okay, I have two with different names. Now you can't do that. And then when you summon conductor, you can still summon the conductor, but it's like, okay, now you just help me gain 3,500 for life points. So if I'm still at full K, that's like. Uh, so it's like 11,500 life points, <laughs> right? <laughs> so. Yeah, so, and then this guy here, all he does, is, all he's really used for, and, like, I mean, you can summon him, but, like, um, all you can use, really use him for is literally you drop him from your hand, and whatever the current attack of Rav Raviel is, it doubles that current attack. So, say if you tribute to Haman, he becomes 4K, not 4K, I'm sorry, 8K, and then you discard this from your hand to the graveyard, then he becomes 16K, and then... The a second effect allows that Raviel to attack all monsters your opponent controls. So if you have this on the field, if you're able to get that this type of setup, and you have this on the field, and you're like, okay, well, you can't activate any of your effects now, so I don't have to worry about you sending my shit to the graveyard off of uh, monster effects. I'm sorry for my language, but um, with this, I don't have to worry about being targeted or destroyed. And if it's monster effects that would normally send something to the graveyard, you don't have to worry about that because they can't activate their effects. So this locks them out from being able to activate their effects, and this prevents 
you from being destroyed by uh, spell or trap card effects. Now, if there's any spell or trap card effects that allow you to send stuff, then you're going to need a different approach. Maybe like Psalm Warning, Psalm Strike, something else that's going to help you basically say, yeah, nah, you ain't going to do that to me, buddy. <laughs> so, um, this is just a good combo, just to, like, you no know, lock out your opponent and say, hey, you can't attack me, but guess what? I can attack you, and I'm just going to double my attack and attack all your monsters, you know, and do a large amounts of damage. Literally, like, your second turn. So this is, like, a good, a good like, good way to be like, okay, hey, I have five cards in my hand, but I can just lock you out so you can't attack me, and you can't destroy my stuff by card effect, and you can't attack me because, you know, I have two Hamans, so it's like, you can only attack this monster. Well, you have two, and you just lock them out. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, this is a you no, know, just a little quick combo video for you guys if you're going first. If you guys want to see combo videos for just going second of how like how far you can extend with this type of deck. Sorry, excuse me. Then um I will, you know, go into further detail. But just like a good little first turn combo that you guys can do. Um And like I said, you can you could constantly recur these little guys here. Because they are, uh, they are zero attack. So you can, each turn you can just reoccur them, you know, for like what you need. Um, you can, you know, yeah, again, every turn you can draw two if you want to stall for Exodia. You can stall for, you, while you're stalling for Exodia as you're drawing your cards, you can just be like, okay, I'm just going to do this. Okay. So I'm just going to be like, if I have an, another extra card in my hand. I'll just, you know, or if I have him back in my hand. Okay, I have him back in my hand. So I'll just be like, okay, I'll discard him. Bring this back. You know, boom. Get another summon off it if I have another another Haman Ravio in my hand. Or if I happen to get this, you know, I could just be like, okay, discard. Or I could just be like, if I get another one, just discard, special summon. And then, you know, uh, I could tribute right tribute and a special summon right from the deck. Um, so usually at that point, I would just definitely probably just go for Yuria, and then mainly just start going into my um, like my exceeds. So some of your exceeds that you have that are um, that are rank tens are your uh, what you call it uh, number XX. Utopia Infinity, and then your Rail Cannon. So, I mean, those are like for like, say, if you're stalling or if um, you're running low, low on life points for some reason, and you get these guys out late game and they're not really helping that much, you could just be like, okay, well, let me figure out a way so I can be like, okay, well, I don't want them to be able to attack this guy. You know, he's 4,000 life safe. Like, okay, um, I just don't want him being attacked because he'll be harder to bring back than the other guys will. Because you could just reoccur these, you know, as you're as you're going along. And um, so if I if I overlay these two and go into him, I can target one uh, monster that was special summon and gain that monster's attack as life points. And then if I attack over one of your monsters, I can detach a material and take that monster as my own and put it on my field. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a uh, red eye zombie dragon, but better because you could target a monster that was special summon, uh, gain life points, and you know go from there. That's if you know that's if you're having a hard time you know uh, maintaining life points. But uh. Yeah, so that is the, the video, guys. And um, and uh, yet again, I know it's been a while. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll do more videos in the future. Uh, we'll see how things go because I do have a, uh, a kid on the way. So we are nine months. <laughs> so <laughs> any day now, any day now, my daughter would be here. So uh, we'll see how things go. And if you do like the video, drop a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel 
and activate the not notification bell for future content like this. If this has helped you guys in any way, please comment down below if it was informative, what you liked about the video, what you hate about the video, what I could do to improve my videos, because any type of feedback would help me help you guys, you know, receive better content, okay? So with that said, guys, this is Lee Drago, and I'll see you on the next one.